Father, we thank you today and we praise you for another opportunity to stand behind your sacred desk, oh God. And so we pray in Jesus' name that you help us, oh Lord. Help us, oh God, to receive the seed that you are about to sow into each of our hearts. And give us the wherewithal, oh Lord, to keep it down, oh God, and, and, and allow it to bring forth manifestation in our lives. In areas of our life that we did not know that we need, uh, needed some manifestation. So touch us, grow us, oh God, expand our faith this morning. Take us higher in you, oh God. And Father, take us, Lord, beyond the realms of, of impossibility to the realm of possibility. But Father, we know that with you all things are possible. And if you be for us, who can be against us? And let someone know today that in spite of what they're going through, Clouds may be over their head, but the sun is definitely shining somewhere. And so I pray that you have your way in this room today. Move Watson out of the way, O oh God, in, a, in order that only you may be heard today, God. Uh, Father, we are living in a, in a wilderness or a desert for lack of word, O oh God. Uh, Father, so I pray that you let your word come forth. And Father, in Jesus' name, give us the strength to embrace it. We thank you, God. We thank you for what you've done up to this point. But yet we give you glory for what we know you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless it. You know, I know you hear us talk, mention to you, praise the Lord, thank the Lord, you know, give him glory. You know, that's the least you can do. You know, you think about all that God has done for us and, and not only what he's done for us, but what he's doing already, right? We ought to thank him for that, right? We shouldn't get to a place in our lives where uh, uh, we become so, what do you say, comfortable with what God is doing for us that we, ah, you know, he should do that. He ought to have done that, right? No, he didn't have to do anything. But he did, right? And so we're still, and the song was a good segue into the message, right? You ought to thank him. So we're still dealing with you from this subject, from sunrise to sunset, right? From sunrise to sunset. In other words, we started in Psalms 113, where David said, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised, right? And so for, from sunrise to sunset, we ought to be praising God because everything in between happened because of him. Do you know that? And I know that many of you know that you would have been consumed by the affairs that you've been challenged with had it not been for God. Right. I mean, you would have given up a long time of, ago had it not been for the Lord. Right. You've gone through one challenge after the other, but you made it out. But by the grace of the Lord. Right. I mean, some of us have been beat down to the ground. Right. We've had things removed out of our life that we held dear to us and folk came up against us that you've been, you've done nothing but been a blessing to. And, and it, you, it carried you through shock therapy because you could not believe that they could betray you in such a way, right? But through it all, from sunrise to sunset, you ought to thank the Lord because, you know, they're shocked. They expected you to break in the midst of what you were going through. But here you are, live and in color, right? Here you are, lifting your hands up to a sovereign God because he is the one that brought you through, right? And brought you out, right? And so I just believe that, you know, once you embrace what God is saying, you know, don't trust the external affairs that are going on around you, but trust the internal works that's happening on the inside of you. God is working in you, right? 
The only way God can change the dimensions of our lives, especially if it's a contradiction to your vision, is that he's got to get inside of you first and begin to work in you and things on the outside of you will change. Right? Tell, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, just praise him anyhow. Come on, say, it may be tough. Praise him anyhow. Come on, say, even with tears in your eyes. Praise him anyhow. You know, sometimes, sometimes we have to, we have to praise him in the midst of our tears. But we know that David said in Psalm 30 that weeping may endure for a night. Come on, talk back to me. You know the book. Weeping may endure for a night, but talk to me today. I said weeping may endure for a night, but when it comes, when it comes, what time is it? Oh, it's morning time, right? Your weeping days is coming to a close, but you got to learn how to praise him uh, even in the midst of your tears. And your tears are not because of defeat, but your tears are because you know victory is just around the corner. Somebody say amen. So Paul said in 2 Corinthians 2 and 14, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph, but through Jesus Christ. You got to thank him because it don't matter what it look like. You're going to win. Tell your neighbor, say it don't matter how it look now. Come on, say it just look like you're losing. But you're winning. Somebody say amen. God didn't save you to lose. Right? I said God didn't save you to lose. God saved you to win. Thank you, brother. But tell your neighbor, say God didn't save you to lose. Come on now, you got to speak this in resounding fashion, fashion now. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, God didn't save you to lose. Come on, he saved you to draw you into the winner's circle. Ooh, you ought to get excited right now. You ought to get excited right now. Thank you, Lord. I heard a, 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 a dear brother say that the doctor may come up with the diagnosis, but God will decide the prognosis. Somebody say amen. But now that's a state of mind. That's a state of mind. You got to think the way God think. I'm telling you, that is what keeps us praising the Lord because we got the mind of Jesus Christ. Is the Lord good? I know what the doctor said, but I'm praising him because I'm going to win. From sunrise to sunset. Right? Don't wait on things to get right to praise him. Right? Don't wait until the, the till you see the, the grocery truck coming. Praise him while the covers are bare. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I said, praise him while the covers are bare. Praise him when all hell is coming up against you. Praise him even in the midst of your struggles. Praise him. You know, and I know that there are times we come in here and, and we're barely making it. You're struggling, but praise him in the midst of your struggle. Right? Come on, somebody. I tell you, God loved to get involved when we're going through something that we can't handle. But you got to be willing to praise him in the midst of that thing you can't handle. Somebody say amen. And I've told you again and again, we're going to give you some scripture. 
But I told you again and again, don't, don't wait on other folk to understand your praise. Don't even waste time trying to translate. Why, you know, you may not jump and run all around like I do. God don't require you to, to emulate somebody else's praise. Y'all didn't hear what I said. You ain't got to run. You ain't got to jump up and scream, right? Sometimes, you know, it's kind of like when you're uh, allowing somebody to go by. You don't open your mouth and say, go ahead. You just say, right? You know, when you're standing in the line, you know, and they got to check your ticket, they don't always tell you to go ahead. They look at your ticket and say, right? And sometimes, hallelujah, we don't have to express ourselves the way other folk do, you just got to say, God, I hear you. <laughs> you got, and that time, you just got to wink at the Lord. I got it, God, right? That's my praise to you. And every now and then, you've heard me say it. You just bob your head. You ain't got to do it. That time, you just got to just, you know, they can't see what you're doing on the floor. But yet, they'll say, oh, they ain't praising me. You don't know what I'm doing. I'm just not doing it the way you do it. Saints of God, I praise him. I praise him, not because I'm the most intellectual on the planet. I praise him, not because I got it going on 24-7, 365, but I praise him because I know he's in control. Right? So I don't praise him because of what I have, right? Even if I don't have it. I'm still going to praise him. Right? Somebody say amen. And at that time, we miss this part. You know, we love to get real deep with God. But, you know, you ain't got to be all that deep. Sometimes all God wants you to do is thank him. You know, just every now and then, just thank me for what I've done. You've gone through some stuff you thought was going to take you completely into the abyss, but you're here. And so he lines it up for us. He tell you why you should be glorying in him. Somebody say amen. Sometimes we talk too much about, we talk more about how, how bad things are, but we never talk about how good God has been to us. Jeremiah 9 and 23. Thank you, Lord. Is God good today? I want you to leave out here thanking the Lord. Praise God. If he's worthy of it. And the very familiar scriptures, of those of you who attend here, you know, uh, on the regular, very familiar. But sometimes we have to get things in the right perspective. Right? Thank you, Lord. Don't praise him because you got your masters and your PhD. Somebody say Amen. Thank him, Lord. Watch what he said. Jeremiah 9 and 23, if you're there, say amen. He said, thus says the Lord. He said, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Right? In other words, don't run around bragging about how smart you are. Right? How many of you know that when you think you're smart, there's always somebody around the corner smarter than you? Right? I didn't thank him that I got some sense at all. And somebody should have said amen. Because you've gone through some things that should have caused you to lose your mind, lose your mind. But you're not, you're still here. You know where you are. Then he said, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. In other words, he said, if you're going to get excited about something, number one, don't get excited because you're smart. And number two, don't get so excited about how strong you are. Right? Come on now. Some folk love to brag, don't they? Sometimes we brag on the wrong thing. Talk to me today. Right? Says, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Right? Thank you, Lord, for what I have. Somebody say amen. Because there was a time when I didn't have a dime to my name. Somebody, I wish I was in the praise of church. I mean, all of us, yeah, we always had nice houses and nice cars and able to go in the closet and pick out a suit, right? Somebody say, man, is the Lord good? 
I put these shirts in the dry cleaner and still had to starch them myself. Praise the Lord. But nonetheless, there was a time when I couldn't buy a shirt. So I don't mind starching it and ironing it myself because I could have came out of the house and didn't have a shirt to put on. But he said, but let him that glorious or praise. So what you're doing, you're praising in authority. You're praising the one who has all power. This is what he's trying to tell you to do, right? He said, but let him that glorious glory in this, that he understands me. And not only do, we under, do you understand me, you know me, right? You know how, in other words, you know what I expect of you, that's understanding, right? And you know me. It's not secondhand information. You've established your own relationship with God. You're not waiting on somebody to tell you that you love God. You're not waiting on no one to tell you that you're saved. You understand him and you know him yourself. And for that, you ought to praise the Lord. Right? I said, and you ought to praise the Lord. Right? You understand God and you know him. This is what you praise him for. Somebody say, man, is God good today? And knoweth me that I am the Lord which exercise what? Loving kindness, judgment, righteousness, where? In the earth. He said, for, for in these things, he said, do I what? Do I delight, says the Lord, right? You need to praise him because... Of his loving kindness. Right? Somebody say amen. Praise him because of his, his loving kindness. If you know that he's been loving towards you, and not only did he love you, but he showed you some kindness. Right? In other words, you did and he should have been rude to you. But he loved you and was kind to you as well. That is what we praise him for. Somebody say amen. And you know what else? And we're moving ahead. You ought to praise him for restoration. I said you ought to praise him for restoration. Your life was tore up to the, from, the, from the floor up. Tore up. Right? Somebody say amen. You didn't know your left from your right in certain seasons. Somebody say amen. Let me tell you, saints of God, you are where you, you didn't never think you would be. You've been through all kind of broken relationships, friendships. You've lost stuff. And, and, but yet in the process, in the interim of all of that, praise God, you have regained some stuff. Somebody say amen. There's time when you, you initially gave your life to the Lord, but you end up backsliding. But God restored you. Don't you know you ought to praise God for restoration? Yeah. Right? How many of you have ever had some things broken in your life, but God fixed it? And we got to praise him. Now, when he fixes it, you got to forget the things that broke it. See, oftentimes when someone breaks us, we sometimes we free, uh, feverishly run back and try to get them. No, God, God restored you. Now you got to let God fix them, right? And sometimes when you're not looking at things through the lens of God, God will fix you and you mess around and end up broken again because you did not, you did not safeguard uh, your restoration. It's one thing to be restored, but it's something else to safeguard your restoration. When God fix you, don't allow someone to turn around and break you all over again. Yeah. 
Psalms 126 and 1. Tell your neighbor, say, don't let them break you all over again. God is so good. God is so good, and I'm so loud. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And by the way, those of you that are still broken, he's going to fix you. Tell your neighbor, say to the left and to the right, you say, if you're broken, he's going to fix us. Come on, say, he's going to give you something to praise him for. Say, wherever you are in your brokenness, you're not there to stay. And I think it would be appropriate to praise him right now. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know you've been hurt by a lot of folk. You've been hurt so bad. Psalm 126 and 1, quickly. I'm still loud, ain't I? He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, you know, in this case he's talking about the children of Israel and perhaps in, 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 in uh, uh, captivity in Babylon or uh, Persia, one of the others said, we were like them that dream. Then, he's talking about restoration now, then was our mouth filled with what? Whew. You know, sometimes God thing can be so bad and God turn around and make you laugh. Have you ever been going through so much and all, and all of a sudden you're laughing about it? I mean, because God got you out of it. Right. I said, God got you out of it. See, those who broke you expected you to stay down in the dumps about it. When they visited you again, they expected you to have your head dropped in the left of your shoulder mourning. But when they came around, you were laughing. And they said, what are you laughing at? Well, you wouldn't understand, you see, because I didn't know I would be where I am right now because of what I come out of. But God turned my brokenness into joy. Hey, neighbor, he's going to do it. And our tongues, he filled with singing. Then said they among the heathen, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. How I many you know that everybody don't want to see you free? See, the enemy knows that if he can separate you from God, you will stay in your deprived state. But they know that what they put you through Right, you should have you should stay in it forever, but not by chance. God got involved, and I don't know where you are right now, but if you praise Him, He'll get involved. Right, if you thank Him, He'll get involved. Right now, you ain't got to do it the way I do it, I told you that earlier, but thank Him anyhow. You know, I told you when my feet touched the floor in the morning, you know, my bed's so high, it take me a while for them to get down there, right? But praise the Lord, when they finally land, I say, God, thank you. Praise the Lord, you allow Shorty to get up one more time. Praise the Lord, I wish I was in a praising church. Don't laugh at me now. Praise the Lord. But I said, God, they touched the floor, and I thank you. There's some folk that laid down, they're still down, but I'm up this morning, and I thank you, Lord, because it was you that woke me up this morning. It was you that started me on my way. It was you that put food on my table. It was you that put me up, gave me a bed to sleep in. It was you that gave me utilities in my house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo. They said, the Lord, the Lord has done 
great things for them. You know, when the devil locked you down and you shouldn't come out of it, you know it was a great thing because you just don't walk out of what the devil run you through. You need somebody with greatness in them to get you out, right? Come on, somebody. Up in here, I told a, a group of young men just the other day, I told all of them greatness is on the inside of you. Now ask me how I know. First John 4 and 4 says, greater is he that is in you than he that is what? In the world. I told them, I said, you can do anything you want to. How can I do anything that I want to? Because you got God's DNA. Right, come on now. God said in Genesis 1 that he created man in his own image and in his own likeness. And that means that you got God's DNA. So it may not have happened yet, but it will happen after a while because you got too much of God in you to be stuck in a negative situation all of your life, day after day after day. God's name is on the line. Thank you, Lord. Is the Lord good, somebody? Said that the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are what? We are glad when God starts moving, no way you can stay sad. You may be sad right now, but get ready to get glad because God is going to move in your life. Somebody say amen. And you may not have given him the praise that he deserved. I promise you that when he started moving like he moves from sunrise to sunset, you're going to be praising him. And as I told you last Sunday, David said he took, took seven praise breaks a day. He said seven days, a, seven times a day, I praise you, Lord. And I'm telling you right now, praise God, when he start moving in your life, you're not going to just be a, a regular praiser. You're going to praise them time after time after time. When you sit down and eat your lunch, you won't ask them to just bless the lunch, but you are praising for the lunch. Is the Lord good? When you get your paycheck, you won't just be accepting a check when they give it to you. Praise God. You may not scream, but you say, thank you, Lord. Is the Lord good? It may not be the amount you want, but it could have been zero. Praise the Lord. I wish I was in a praise of church. It could have had zero on it, but you got a check nonetheless. For the check, you ought to tell God, thank you. Is the Lord good? And if the one handing you the check get it confused and say, you ain't got to thank me, you say, well, I'm sorry that you mistaken my praise for you. No, it's not for you, but it's for the Lord. Is the Lord good? Come on, somebody in here. The Lord has done great things for us and where we are glad. He's not just doing it for one of us. He's doing it for all of us. And he said, turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears. Whew. <laughs> I think we said that earlier, right? They that sow in tears. Uh-uh-uh. They that sow in tears. Somebody say Amen. They that sow in tears, you're going to start reaping in joy. Somebody say amen. You've, you've given up so much of yourself, but the return is going to be greater than what you sowed, right? Somebody say amen. And I'm, I'm looking forward to reaping and not reaping out of sadness, but reaping out of joy. Somebody say amen. And he's the kind of God that is able to turn those things around. But saints of God, don't wait till things get good. Ain't nothing wrong with my brain whatsoever. I know I'm being repetitive. Don't wait on things to line up and get in your favor before you start praising him. You thank him, hallelujah, with your headache, right? You, you thank him while your joints are hurting. And if you thank him after a while, you feel something running through those joints. God is an awesome God. And he that go, goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I don't know how you left, but I know how you're coming back. Somebody say amen. 
God is getting ready to do something spectacular in your life. But thank him for what he's done already. No, I said you got to thank him for what he's done already. The God that we serve, he is deserving of all the praise that you can muster up. He deserves it. If he don't do another thing for us, if he don't do another thing for us, he deserves our praise. You've, had, you've heard me say this a thousand times. We ought to praise him because he did it. Praise him because he did it. And not only did he, did he do it, but he's still doing it. And for those of you Bible study folk, you know, we talk, talk to you about the fact that the enemy tried to uh, trap, put all of us in traps at some point in time. But God, he broke the trap, right? And we have got to thank the Lord. A very familiar set of scriptures that I'm going to read to you because I've read them a thousand times in this church. But we're going to read them again today. You've got to thank God. Thank him in the midst of dark times. Praise him. You know, and, you know, no matter what you're faced with, God is still in control. I want you to go with me just for the sake of traveling. Go to Psalms 124 and 1. I've read it a thousand times. It wasn't that you were that smart or that you were that skilled that you got out of what you were going through. It was the Lord. It was the Lord. It was the Lord. If you're there, say amen. Here's, here's what David said. He said, if it had not been for whom? The Lord who was where? On our side. Now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, whew, there's a whole lot of battles we would have lost if God wasn't with you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Says if, when, when men rose up against, against us, then they had swallowed us up quick. And when their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had, had overwhelmed us and the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has what? Has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is what? Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. Our soul was escaped out of the trap of the bird catches. You know, the fowler here is symbolic of Satan himself. God brought you out of his trap, right? I mean, and he keep laying them over and over and over again, and God keep breaking them. Our help is where? Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Don't you get that skewed in any way. Every ounce of your help don't come from mankind. Your help comes from the Lord. And therefore, you ought to thank the Lord, right? And, I, and, and just as a little caveat, I want you to, I want, last scripture, I want you to get this. Please get this. Saints of God, we're human. You're saved, but you cannot separate salvation from humanity. You're still a human being. And there are moments in all of our, our, our lives. And you can say, say amen to this when I finish. There's a moment in all of our lives, 
all of our lives. We are going through so much that we just don't feel like praising him. And you ain't got to be super spiritual with me today. Right? There are days you catch it so much air, you say, ah, I don't feel like that. I heard what that old fella said, son, but I ain't feeling that. Right? But don't you know that there are times you got to tell God, if you bring me out of this, if you pull me out, Lord, this is the only time you're allowed to bargain with God right here. If you pull me out, come on now. If you pull me out of what I'm in right now, God, I want to praise you, but I can't muster up a praise right now. But if you pull me out, have you ever felt like that? Be real now. Oh, I've been there. I've been there. I'm telling you, I've, I've been catching so much hell. You know, I, God, I heard what you said, but, but right now, right now, you are awesome, God. I know you're awesome. But right now, my soul messed up. Right now, I got burden on me that I can't handle. Right now, God, if it ain't one thing, it's another. I, I want to, but it won't come out. But David said, if you pull me out of this, <laughs> if you pull me out, wave your hand if you've ever been there. Right. You see, the church of teaching taught you how to be fake, right? I didn't fake it till you make it. The devil is a lie. This is how I feel. This is real. I don't feel like doing it right now. Right. But in that moment, because you're feeling so deprived, of all the things you need. And that storm, you can't see God's hand nowhere. Somebody say amen. amen. So David said, God, get me out of this. And I promise you, you ain't never going to see anybody praise you like I'm getting ready to pray. If you'll get me out of this thing, God, my God, the old preacher won't get to preach Sunday at all. Because I'll be all over the place just praising God. If you'll get me out of this, God. Psalms 142 and 1. The seventh verse is our target. That's our target. So don't, don't run there yet. Let, give me a chance to read it all. Praise God. Psalms 142. And we're going to read the first through the seventh verse. Tell your neighbor God going to get us out of this. Come on, say, the devil will not rob you of your praise. God's going to bring you out. That's all right, pray. That's real, right? That's real. And sometimes we, you know, I, I'm giving you the, the complete story. Somebody say Amen. If you're there, say amen, Psalm 142 and 1. He said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. He said, I poured out my complaint before him. I told him everything that was bothering me. I showed before him my trouble, I laid it all out there. I said, this is what I'm going through right now. Oh, my Jesus. Is he good, somebody? When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the, way, in the way wherein I walk, have they privately laid a snare? For me, they, you can put they, whoever they is to you, you know, they put traps in your way. You thought they was there to help you. Instead, they, every time they left you, you felt worse, right? But he said, I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. You know, I had folk all around me, but there, there were folk on the left and the right. 
but they act as though they did not understand what I was dealing with. And neither did they show any support as it relates to getting me out of it. Refuge failed me. And he said, no man cared for my soul. Whew. That's some deep stuff right there. He said, I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, they won't cover me, but I know you will. Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Praise God. He said, attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Praise the Lord. How many of you know you got to tell God where you are before he can help you? You got to say, God, right now, I'm at the lowest point of my life. He said, deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. But then, watch his request. He said, bring my soul out of prison that I may praise, oh my God, that I may praise thy name. <laughs> Somebody say amen. I'm telling you that time, you got to say, God, if you just get me out of this, I'll praise you like I never praised you before. Somebody say amen. And, and what David was saying that, you know, man don't care nothing about you. They can only care about you while things are going good. But when the tables are turned and they know you want something, they'll ignore you. But God, I know you love me. He said, bring my soul out of prison that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall come past me about, but thou should deal bountifully with me. Can I translate that? See, when you bring me out and I start praising you, everybody going to want to be around me. Notice now, nobody cared about his soul until he came out. Then he said, even the righteous, the church folk, right, they start surrounding me, right, from sunrise to sunset. Bless his name. If you're too low and you can't praise him like you want it, tell him to come get you. Bring me out, and then, Lord, I'll bless your name. Right? Come on, let's stand and go home. Thank you, Lord.